So on today's Adventures of Ed, we are parked at Suspension Bridge parking lot and heading back toward uh, Cloud Splitter. And then I want to check out a side trail that someone told me about. Supposedly it goes up to a ridge. Um, it's supposed to have a beautiful view. Other news for today is I'm using a new camera. Um, it has a wireless mic. So hopefully I'll be able to get some better audio when I'm recording. Uh, the new camera is a full HD camera. Hopefully the sound quality is going to be better. And uh, because I've already recorded a lot of this trail, I probably won't record a lot of video until I actually get to Cloud Splitter. The guy told me that the uh, trail is uh, kind of hidden. So we'll see. I did find a side trail that basically brought me over to this. It's almost like a cave. I have honestly got to say, this is probably more beautiful view than what it is on Cloud Splitter. Cloud Splitter, by the way, is right straight across. So where I camped at was about right there. You would not believe the climb I had to get through, go through to get up here. So you can go up a little bit further. Don't know what this rock is. And let's see if I can get up in here. And if I didn't have the camera, I probably could. Well, I made it. It looks like it goes back a little bit farther. Um, I will, uh, probably set my pack down I have to admit this is pretty cool I'm going to enjoy waking up to the uh, sunset will be over or sunrise will be over there place is starting to get packed. I passed numerous hikers on a trail that I usually never see anybody on. So I went ahead and grabbed water for dinner tonight and breakfast tomorrow and threw up camp so that somebody else didn't rob it first. So I'm going to zoom over to a cloud splitter and see if you can see the cave. Uh, see if people sitting there now if I zoom back out I uh, I didn't pitch my tarp so much for the rain because they're not there's like a 10% chance of rain tonight but uh, mostly for the dew uh, so I kind of pinched, pitched it tight or high as you can see, I use the uh, trekking pole. Um, the only one that has a uh, stake in it, though, is this first one here. The two back ones I was able to do to trees, and the, this one over here I was able to do to a bush, even though I used the uh, trekking pole. The back ones I just uh, found trees tall enough. So basically, when I'm laying in the hammock, this will be my view.
I wanted to do some exploring while I'm here because I noticed earlier that this trail goes way back so down there is my camp that's that rock crevice that I started to come up earlier just come up through there there's a trail that goes way back through here um, I, I hiked maybe a quarter of a mile back and the trail actually gets better so uh, let's go see where this takes us I guess this is probably where I'm going to stop. I could maybe come up here tomorrow and explore farther back with the actual gear. But uh, this is about as safe as I feel like going right now. So anyways, back to the firewood thing. I'm leaving no trace. Um, I have been down camping and literally felt like I was freezing to death and I will not start a fire now if I'm car camping at like a campsite that has a fire ring I will usually buy pre-made firewood and use it but when I'm out doing hammock hangs and I'm just setting up camp wherever I never start a fire you always watch on all these survival shows, you're like, shelter, fire, water. I'm going to say bullshit. Although I do agree that water is very important and shelter is important. Fire? Not really. I mean, maybe if you killed some game or something and you needed to cook it. Or if you didn't have a uh, cook set stove, stove and cook set like I've got. Man, the trail is coming through. Uh, you might. But uh, since I bring my alcohol stove with me everywhere, I've always got water. I ain't got to worry about that too much. I pretty much always have my... Uh, water source and my way to cook figured out so for dinner tonight I have a choice I actually brought my chili that I always bring I brought my oatmeal that I brought the last time the oatmeal with the powdered milk and I noticed while I was buying some like trail food snacks at Walmart that Mountain House has come out with something new backpacking meals um, they're really light and it was sweet and sour chicken I believe and as soon as I read what it was, automatically I said, wow, that would be awesome. <laughs> I mean, I make a pretty mean sweet and sour chicken, also sweet and sour pork. But I will try Mountain Houses. The other thing was, too, they're now doing these half-serving sizes. So, you know, it used to be they cost, the meals would cost like, you know, around 9 to $13. And this one was basically $4.50 or $4.97 or something like that. And so reading the uh, nutritional information, I realized it's only 270 calories for the whole meal. And it's only one serving. So if you know anything about Mountain House and uh, Backpackers Pantry and all the other freeze-dried meals. They usually have two meals in one bag. Um, that usually works out pretty good for me because by the time you waste three or four thousand calories in a day, you're ready to have a you know, eight, nine hundred calorie meal. So I got the chili and I got the uh, sweet and sour chicken. I'm not sure which one I'm gonna do tonight. Almost back to camp now. Probably when I get back there, I have a feeling I need to grab the toilet paper and go take a walk without the camera. Sorry. Yeah, here's like the. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you can see it or not. There's like toilet paper everywhere. So the place I walked up on, I was like, what the hell is that? Is this? So I can zoom in. I was like, wow, that's some weird looking shit. 
Then I realized it was toilet paper that's around it. More toilet paper, more toilet paper. Like this is the dump side, I guess. Won't be for me though. I will go dig a hole. I will find a stick and dig a hole like you're supposed to. And instead of leaving the toilet paper behind, I will stick the toilet paper in my trash bag. It's in my back pocket. Speaking of, let me show you real quick. No, there's no toilet paper or anything in it right now. Just some snack papers. So I carry a Ziploc with me. All my trash goes in it. I keep it in my back pocket unless it gets too big. So I'm going back down this uh, rock thing here again. Hopefully I don't need both hands. I've did this once already and didn't. It's not too bad. Once you do it a couple times. If I start to fall and drop the camera though, you know why. FYI, that is a lot steeper than it looks. All right, I'm back to camp, so I'll record some more later on. Maybe when the sun's going down or when I cook dinner or So now that the sun is going down, I went ahead and put my underquilt, the summer underquilt, on the hammock. Uh, the wind's starting to pick up with the sun going down. Kind of see the sun over there in the about two hours before it starts getting dark. Probably around 5.30 p.m., 6 p.m., somewhere around there. I'm getting ready to set up and do dinner. Um, I'll go more into that here in a little bit. And of course we have the ever new titanium alcohol stove with the uh, little stand on top of it and the GSI minimalist uh, cook pot. For dinner, we are going to have something new I talked about earlier. Mountain House Sweet and Sour Pork with Rice. It's a one serving size, freeze dried. It weighs maybe a couple of ounces. Uh, nutrition, 290 calories. Uh, 770 milligrams of sodium, 49 grams of carb, 12 grams of protein, 12 grams of sugar. So not not too awfully bad. Uh, with these being the one serving size, uh, probably not going to be as filling as the other ones that I normally use. Of course, I also have my selection of coffee. And in case I decide to have hot chocolate, I have one packet of hot chocolate. So it usually takes about five minutes for this to boil. This is water straight out of the stream, so it does have to be boiled. Um, no filtering whatsoever. Literally stick the bottles in the stream and fill them up. So uh, I'll bring this to a boil and then I'll let you know how this dinner tastes. A friend of mine bought me a monocular. 10 by 25. It's made by Barska. It actually does a really good job. Um, I've used it to kind of you know, watch people going up and down cloud splitter. I've used it to check out uh, things off in the distance. Um, it doesn't weigh too much. Uh, I don't know the exact ounces off the top of my head. Um, and then for this trip in particular, because I never know exactly how cold it gets, except for unless I turn my phone on, assuming it's got reception. So I 
brought a thermometer that shows the high and the low and it resets every 24 hours. The low for the day has been, it may not focus, 59 degrees and the highest temperature was 70 and it's currently 67. Now it is hanging right there in the sun. I don't really think it's 67 degrees. It might be right there in the sun. In the shade it feels a lot cooler. Um, but we'll see what the temperature gets down to tonight. It's only supposed to get down to 57, I believe. Some people come by earlier, a whole group of, seem like college kids, taking the back way over to Cloud Splitter. And as I was laying in my hammock and they were walking by, the one guy says, I hope you don't sleepwalk, and let me show you why. Now you probably can't tell it, but that is the very tip tops of really, really tall trees. Um, if I took about four more steps, I would probably drop a good... Mm, it's taller than it was at Cloud Splitter, so maybe 125 feet, 150 feet. The sun is getting ready to set. Going by the finger rule, it's less than an hour before it'll be behind this ridge line. The uh, one thing I know from when I camped last weekend at Cloud Splitter is that when the sun goes behind that ridge, it casts a shadow across this valley. Way off in the distance is the Glady Learning Center. Let me see if I can zoom in and hold this still enough. That is Glady Learning Center. I don't know how far away it is. Um, I'm going to guess mile, mile and a quarter. This camera really has a zoom on it. I didn't realize that. As much as I've used this camera today, it still says I have 69 minutes left. And I have 7 hours of recording left on the uh, 64 gig drive. I am recording in MP4 mode and not uh, not uh, true HD, AV, CHD or whatever it is. I did that mostly because I wasn't sure how much data was going to fit on the card. So uh, maybe the next outing I'll try it in uh, full HD. Finally using my new Goal Zero Flip 10. Uh, it works really well. I was at about 50% charged five minutes ago, and now I'm up to 63%. So, uh, only five minutes has passed by. Now, I, the phone is shut off. Um, it seems like phones always charge quicker when they're shut clear off. So the sun's going down, but of course the camera's correcting for it, making everything brighter. That, uh, that orange peak back in the background, that is the only thing that's really still lit up. The rest is uh, not.
a beautiful sunrise. It is 40 degrees outside right now. So basically I woke up, laid there in the hammock and watched the sunrise, listening to the birds and the turkeys. And uh, like I said, it got down to 40. And how do you know that, you might ask? And well, it actually says 39 now. So you can see it there currently 46 it got down to 39 the high yesterday was 70 so the way that this uh, DIY hammock works you got this bungee cord in here and it basically goes up and hooks into the carabiner of the uh, hammock and if you want to raise the tarp more you tighten up the bungee cord by putting a knot in one end of it um, the cinch ends here you can see this is the factory end basically pull it so that it's cinched up against the bottom of the hammock and then the one on my end the that I sewed in kind of the same way. Looks like I left that a little loose. I did have a little bit of a cold spot last night. I guess that's probably why. Okay, I have a uh, camp is all packed up. Cleaned up, ready to go. First thing on today's agenda is I was going to go over to Cloud Splitter, but there's still people over there camping and to get to uh the rope you have to walk right through their camp so I'm gonna skip that I'm gonna head back to the suspension bridge let me record this uh, access to this spot that I'm at you can kind of see on my way down it's pretty steep made it up here getting down the fun part usually when you're uh, climbing on rocks you should always have uh, three points of contact I'm only going to be able to do two because I'm holding the camera in one hand and uh, the other one I use for balance. A few roots and things you can grab a hold of or stand on. A few tree limbs you can kind of use to lower yourself down to the next level. Gotta kind of watch these roots though, they can trip you up real quick. First thing on the agenda though actually is to get water. I am clear out. I know you can't see how steep this is, but that's alright. Probably sound like a herd of elephants. Just to kind of give you an idea, I come from way up there. That's a distance of maybe uh, 40 feet. Probably at about a uh, 45 degree angle. Or I'm sorry. Yeah, that'd be about right. 45 degrees. This right here kind of leveled out a little bit, not as bad. Sorry if the camera's so shaky. A lot of people make the mistake of walking on their tiptoes when they're walking on rocks. That is like the worst thing to do. You should always walk flat-footed, even if the rock's at an angle. It gives you more gripping power on your shoes. And uh, more stopping power should you start to slip like I just did. How did I do this yesterday? I'd say just go for it and let these roots stop me. Actually, there's a little better problem over here. I'm gonna the pine needles look wet. Um, well, when all else fails, just say fuck it and go for it. We'll make it down to this. Double check my foot in there. And then, damn. Piece of cake. I've got done this a time or two or something. Let me uh, 
tell you a trick that I know. Always carry bubble gum with you when you're hiking. If you are running low on water, put a stick or two in your mouth. And uh, just the fact that there's something there uh, to chew on will cause your mouth to salivate. That looks promising. So basically this is the process. Squeeze bag is kind of hard to do one handed so I'm going to put the camera down. And that's how you get water on the trail. Um, two things I always bring with me on hikes. I always bring my GPS. And I always bring my polar watch. And I track uh, both distance and heart rate. Uh, knowing my heart rate on trails allows me to say, oh, this trail was really excruciating. So there's the bridge, but my car is this way. <laughs> 